Good morning. I am in Gracechurch Street in the city of London. And uh, the reason for this video today is that I want to show you the route to the old London Bridge. Because where London Bridge is situated now is not where it has always been situated. And uh, that's what I'm going to show you. Well, Gracechurch Street is the southern end or the continuation of Bishopsgate at the northern end where you go in and out of the city gate or where you used to anyway and it used to run north to south straight down to London Bridge but when they built the new London Bridge however long ago that was it was to the west of the old London Bridge and there's a kink in the road and if you walk in a straight line down to where the old bridge used to be you walk underneath the archway of a church that is where the old bridge would have been set, situated and that's where I'm going to walk down that way so and as a consequence I'm just going to show you a few little back streets along the way this is the ship tavern passage look at this The Swan. I'm not going to go too far off the beaten track. I'm going to stay close to Gracechurch Street, but I'm going to show you a few of these little back streets off of it. All oh, right, this is taking you round to the back of Lednall Market, actually, which, in and of itself, is uh, a very historical old market. Look at these places, look. Little alleyways. God knows where these go. Don't think I've ever been down here in my life. Yeah, this is the back of Lednall Market. This is not really where I want to be. Let's walk down Lime Street and get back onto Gracechurch Street. There is the walkie talkie. Sky Gardens up the top there, I've been up there with a family. Get a lovely view of the Shard across the river, which you can see in the background there. Downfield Pot Lane. Yeah, so we're back out, coming back out onto Gracechurch Street via Fenchurch Street. So that building there, the Marks and Spencers on that corner there, that's earmarked for a new development, another big skyscraper. But there was before that was built, not that long ago uh, an old type of skyscraper if I can find a picture of it, I'll put it on there now and I quite like the look of the old building although it was much derided by most people I quite like the look of it, it fitted in with the London skyline at the time grey <laughs> and uh, not very appealing like London is a lot of the time <laughs> 
I'm a cynic. So we've got a couple of little courtyards here. All right, I'll go up here, St Bennett's Place. It don't look like it's going anywhere. And by the looks of these railings up here, this is probably private land and there'll be a security guard running out of here, I should imagine. Don't know, it just says bicycles chains to the railings will be removed without further notice. Don't say I can't film, but saying that, there's not much in here anyway. Well, that was St. Bennett's Court. This is Lombard Court. Another uninspiring back street. Let's see where this goes. It looks like it actually does lead somewhere. Well, not that way anyway. That's just the back of an office. Lombard Court. I wonder where this is bringing me out to. I wonder whether this is... Might be Nicholas Lane. Or Abchurch Lane. Oh no, Clements Lane. <laughs> Got there in the end. Lombard Court. I wasn't going to walk down here, but I've just seen another little court. I'm going to have a walk up here now. St Clements Court. Let's see where this goes. Well, that church is obviously St. Clement's Church. And the little courtyard down the side of it is called St. Clement's Court. Let's have a little look. There's a couple of little plaques on the wall as well. Here lived in 1784, Dosite Obradovich. It's easy for me to say, 1742 to... 1811, eminent Serbian man of letters, first minister of education in Serbia. Church court, entrance to 3741 Grace Church Street. Let's see what's up here. Not much, I suspect. It's just basically the back of a church and, and back of offices. Not much to see here at all. But it does go around the back there. Looks promising. But not really. Let's get back on track. I'm going to uh, turn the camera off and get back to where I was in Gracechurch Street because you've seen all this before. I didn't see that on the way through, that little remnant of an old building there.
Right, so this is what I was saying about Bishopsgate leading onto Gracechurch Street, heading south, down towards the old London Bridge, and you can see the route it used to take. That's where I'm headed. So this is East Cheap. Just gonna have a little walk up here because there was a little side alley that I noticed the other day driving past. I'm just gonna have a little look up there now. Talbot Colt. Uh, let's have a walk up here. I noticed it the other day. I've never walked up here before, so yeah, I want to see what's up here. The Ship Pub. There's a little right up on the wall. There's a couple of write-ups actually. The ship stands on the site of an original coaching inn called the Talbot, named after a breed of hunting dog. The building was destroyed during the Great Fire of London in 1666, which devastated 373 acres in just four days. To commemorate, the monument was erected in 1677. Designed by Christopher Wren, it stands 202 feet tall. The same distance has to the source of the fire in Pudding Lane. The pub was rebuilt and renamed the ship after the dock workers and deckhands that used to drink here. Right, okay. Another little write up there. Who William Nicholson, 1824 to 1909, distiller, politician, cricket player, benefactor. The ship lies in Talbot Court, previously a coaching in here. We've just read that on the other plaque. So this is taking us round into. Whatever this place is. Um, this is confusing me. I don't know where this is going to bring me out. Talbot's Court. Is this back out onto Gracechurch Street? How did I not notice this? Yeah, it is. Look. I walked straight past this. I totally missed this one. So Lombard Court and I walked straight down now. And I totally missed that Talbot Court. But you've seen it there anyway. So no need to go back down now. I can carry on straight down Gracechurch Street into Fish Street Hill. On the old route towards London Bridge. Or the old London Bridge. Yeah, look, there's a plaque here as well that I've missed. In a house on this site lived William Curtis, botanist, 1746 to 1799. Yeah, I remember the William Curtis Ecological Park, where uh, the mayor's office is now. Me and my mates used to go over there and uh, gather frog spawn and the like. What is this? A National Provident Institution, open for business in one room in Nicholson Lane on the 30th of November 1835 and moved to 48 Gracechurch Street in March 1843. Right, okay. Not very interesting, that plaque. So, yeah. Let's walk down to where the old London Bridge used to be. And this is the route to it. Oops. Fish Street Hill.
and there is the monument a 202 foot tall monument that was built to commemorate the Great Fire of London you can actually go right to the top of that when it's open but I doubt if it's open now you get a good view from the top of there the skyscrapers are closing in but you do still get a good view at the top of it there's got to be loads of plaques to read around here opposite this site stood St Margaret Fish Street Hill destroyed in the Great Fire 1666 Oh right, that Latin inscribed on the wall up there is translated here in the year of Christ 1666 on the 2nd of September at a distance eastward from this place of 202 feet which is the height of this column a fire broke out in the dead of night which the wind blow it which the wind blowing devoured even distant buildings and rushed devastating through every quarter with astonishing swiftness and noise okay uh, there's a lot there to read basically let's go for it quick a great number of blocks of buildings 13,200 houses 400 streets 26 walls were utterly destroyed Jesus 15 were left mutilated and half burnt um, it destroyed 436 acres Wow, yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing what that must have been like back in the day because that was most of the old city of London back in the day. So that's Monument Street and that's Pudding Lane now where the corner of this building is there that is Pudding Lane now so uh, that is where the Great Fire of London actually started over there in Pudding Lane. Oh yeah, look, this is actually telling you at the bottom. St Magnus de Marta, Fish Street Hill, to the south, leads to St Magnus de Marta, a Wren church, alongside which is the ancient street which led to the medieval London Bridge. So that's what I've been telling you all along. So this street down here, that would have taken you over London Bridge. And it was a continuation of Gracechurch Street. So you would have came straight through the city, through Bishopsgate, down the street which is called Bishop's Gate all the way down to Gracechurch Street all the way down Fish Street Hill and this way down to London Bridge which at the time back in the day would have had all houses on top of it you've seen the old pictures it would have been amazing to see that to go back to that time and to have a little look So we've made it to St Magnus de Marta. So a couple of hundred years ago, when you walked over London Bridge, you would have walked underneath this arch, underneath this church to get to the bridge. It's amazing really. And there, well, you just, traffic started up now. That road going above this road, from left to right that is London Bridge that is new London Bridge or present London Bridge and these are I think chunks of masonry from the old London Bridge I think they are looks like there was a plaque on there but it might have been removed so um, I'll have to find out later but I'm quite sure that that's what they are they are chunks of masonry from the old London Bridge sounds like 
bloody Silverstone out there, doesn't it? So this is mad. This is just, uh, well, just a courtyard around the side of the church. There's nothing else to see. I know inside the church because I see it a few years ago. Anyway, as I was saying, this church, it's not open now, but inside there, they've got a model of what the old London Bridge used to look like. But it's, yeah, it's not open now. Look at that. That's a chunk of wood from the Roman Wolf around about AD 75 that's been dated to. Wow, look at that. A chunk of wood that is 2,000 years old and was part of the old Roman wolf of the city of London. That's amazing. You could just come here and touch that history. Look at that, look. <laughs> look at that someone's written. You shall not enter the kingdom of heaven lest you give all you have to the poor right okay i'm sure that falls on deaf ears you've got all these other little plaques which i'm not sure what on earth they are for little notice boards little door there look at that It's an amazing old building. I wish I could go inside the church and show you. Right, yeah, look, here it is. This churchyard formed part of the roadway approach to Old London Bridge, 1176 to 1831. So, yeah, nearly 200 years ago was the last time you could have done that. Um, I want to get actually to the river, but there's a building in the way, which is Adelaide House. I want to get up. Oh, wait a lot. I've just seen a just seen a sign there for Thames Path. I was going to say I'll walk up to the bridge and walk up some steps up to the bridge, but um, I'm going to walk down this here, Thames Path. Mad, isn't it? Behind the church here, look. There's a plaque on the wall there, but you'll never get to it because it's private, so. I'll have to wonder what that says. So yeah, and it would have, the pathway onto the bridge, onto the old bridge, would have been right where that section of Adelaide House is standing now there's the shard and Hayes Wolf across the way is that a gravestone over there let's go and read it it don't say keep off the grass and if something's written down you've got to be able to read it haven't you so in memory of Robert R Wright born 24th of April 1945 and Peter Docking, born on the 1st of March 1967, who tragically died at St Magnus House on the 22nd of April 1998. Wow, that's quite recent. There was obviously something else there to commemorate that, but it's gone. I wonder what happened there. I'll have to, I'll have to look into that. So there you go, this is the newer and rather boring utilitarian looking London Bridge.
and that is Adelaide House. So, yeah, the old bridge would have would have uh, well would have gone right across the river, right across here. That concludes really what I wanted to show you: the old route of London Bridge. I thought it was worth showing. Imagine the history of this place. I'd like to drain the Thames and look on the on the riverbed and just see what you could find. You'd, you'd probably find all the old pilings of the old bridge, all sorts of artifacts, I should imagine. This is the second longest river in Britain after the River Severn. So to the left up there, downstream, where the sun's shining right into the camera, that takes you out into the Thames estuary, bounded by Essex to the north and Kent to the south, into the southern North Sea. And that way there, takes you eventually all the way to Oxford, and beyond, Gloucestershire actually. I think 200 odd miles. So it's a mere trickle compared to other rivers in the world, but uh, it's the second longest river in Britain. I'm sure you already know that. It's amazing, that is what the bridge actually used to look like there. So this is bringing us up onto the new London Bridge, which is just basically a road over the river. And this is Adelaide House. This was what was built in front of the old pathway onto the old London Bridge. So this particular bridge that we're on now is built in 1967. And Adelaide House is not being used. I wonder what they're going to do to it. Right, that is it. That really is it. That's the end over and out